today we'll be going over some NBA comparisons for most players who are projected to be a lottery pick. First up is Anthony Edwards, and I would most compare him to Ben Simmons. It's really all about their athletic ability and their ability to finish in transition. Both of these guys, when you see them on the fast break, you better watch your head because they will be jumping out of the gym to finish that ball. Whether it's cutting into the lane with insane speed and handles, or if it's coming down the court on a fast break and going up for the dunk, Ben Simmons and Anthony Edwards both excel at that level. Both of them get points in a similar fashion. They both like to cut inside rather than shoot threes. Now, obviously, Ben Simmons is a much worse three-point shooter than Anthony Edwards, but Anthony Edwards isn't too great himself, only shooting around 29% at Georgia. Now, Anthony Edwards' shot selection was really why he shot so low of a percentage. He really needs to get better at his shot selection, and I think Ben Simmons has him beat there because Ben Simmons knows he can't shoot threes, and so he just doesn't shoot threes. That's just how Ben Simmons plays his game. Anthony Edwards needs to realize that he is really a guy who can't take contested deep threes like he's been trying to do all season at Georgia. He needs to realize that he's just a guy who cuts into the paint and finishes. Ben Simmons has shown that that play style in the NBA can be effective, and Anthony Edwards needs to model his game more after that until he can get that three-pointer to a more deadly locked-in space. This comparison is really all about athletic ability and their ability to finish in transition, though. Their ability to come down the court with some insane speed and finish, whether it is a dunk or whether it's an up-and-under layup, both of these guys excel with finishing and really just capitalizing off of every single turnover, or even when you inbound the ball all the way at the other end of the court, just burning the other team and getting to the rim very quickly. Both of these guys excel in that area, and that's why I think Anthony Edwards and Ben Simmons are my two comparisons. Next up is Obi Toppin, and obviously my NBA comparison for him is LeBron James. Now, I'm not saying that Obi Toppin will be the next LeBron James. In fact, most players on this list probably won't be as good as their NBA comparisons. However, I do believe Obi Toppin and LeBron's game show a lot of similarities, especially younger LeBron, especially like Miami Heat or rookie year Cleveland LeBron. Because of their three-level scoring, their build, their athleticism, and their dominating nature of their game, both of these guys play an extremely physical, extremely entertaining, high-flying, type of game. I mean, Obi Toppin has some insane dunk highlights from this season, and obviously LeBron has been putting out dunk highlights his entire career. Both of these guys are tall and they are built. They aren't that kind of tall, lanky, where you're like six foot and you weigh 120 pounds. No, both of these guys are, are built, they are muscular, they are fantastic players, they have an NBA-ready body. Obi Toppin's athleticism and his three-level scoring is really why he's compared, in my opinion, to LeBron. His athleticism is fantastic, and he really knows how to shoot a three, mid-range, and finish in the paint, and that's why I think he's a lot like LeBron. He can really just do it all on the court. Now, the only thing he's missing that LeBron's game has is his passing ability. That's why I say he's more like a young LeBron. He's more like LeBron before LeBron developed the ability to pass like he can now, hitting those no-look passes being first in the league in assists. He's not that LeBron. He is the old school LeBron. Obi Toppin, while I don't think he will have the same career as LeBron, because that would be a very bold statement, I do believe his play style is most like LeBron's, and that's why he is Obi Toppin's NBA comparison. Next up is LaMelo Ball and Jamal Murray. Both of these guys are extremely crafty scorers. They know how to handle the ball, and they know how to pass and rebound and shoot it. Both of these guys have similar levels of athleticism. They both can hit dunks in game, but it's not, you know, Russell Westbrook level. They are two athletic point guards. They are both very quick. They both handle the ball very well. I really think that this NBA comparison is very accurate. And I think if LaMelo Ball turns into a Jamal Murray level of player, then I think it would be a very good turnout for this draft pick. And I think LaMelo Ball has the potential to do what Jamal Murray does, but even better at the next level. LaMelo Ball shooting is really what he needs to improve on, and he only shot, what was it, like 37% overseas, which isn't very great. However, he needs to just improve that shooting percentage number, and then he'll really be an all-star quality point guard. He already has the handling ability. I mean, everybody on the planet has seen that crossover 
where he crosses over the defender and then does it again and then passes the ball and his big man botches the dunk. And, you know, that's a, that really shows similarities to Jamal Murray's game, bringing that ball up court, hitting those shifty, quick, crafty dribble moves, and then getting guys open. I love the way that Jamal Murray plays, and I love the way that LaMelo Ball plays. This is a, this is a NBA comparison that I feel most experts are missing, and I really do like this one. I feel it is accurate. And it's really all about their handling, their shooting, their type of stats. I mean, Jamal Murray's stats and LaMelo Ball stats are almost identical from LaMelo's season in Illaware and Jamal's season in Denver. I mean, Jamal Murray can really do it all. He can pass, he can rebound, and LaMelo Ball averaged 17 points, 7.5 assists, and 7 rebounds. This is a guy who is a triple-double threat almost every night, and I would have compared him to Russell Westbrook, although he's not as athletic, and that was the only problem. His shooting percentage is just as streaky as Westbrook's, that's for sure, and he definitely has the triple-double threat, but really the problem was his, his athleticism isn't to that level, and that's where I think Jamal Murray comes in. He isn't very athletic, but he is a great ball handler. He is kind of athletic. He can definitely dunk the ball in transition or on an open drive. I really like this NBA comparison. Next up is James Wiseman to a prime Dwight Howard. James Wiseman is a massive center coming out of Memphis. He is lanky. He is standing at 7'1", and he is extremely strong. Now, Prime Dwight Howard was known for being a bad shooter, and James Wiseman, while at Memphis, only took one three, and he missed it. So, James Wiseman, I believe, does have a better shot than Dwight Howard did back then. Obviously, Dwight Howard this season has shown that he can really improve his three-point shot, because he did by far this season. Now, James Wiseman is a guy that I love. His athleticism is really similar to a Prime Dwight Howard's, and I believe he is that exact old type of big man that the league is lacking these days. His shooting and his strength, his size and his athleticism are all similar to a prime Dwight Howard. Now he isn't as big, he isn't as bulky as a prime Dwight Howard, but I believe that can come with age. He's still, he's gotta fill out his body a bit more. But once he does that, he will be certainly unstoppable in the paint. I mean, standing at 7-1, few guys can block that in general, but when you add at extreme athleticism like he has, then he's borderline unstoppable. I would love to see James Wiseman succeed in this league, and I believe that he will as long as he goes to the right team. Next up is Killian Hayes, and I compare him mostly to Kimba Walker. It's really all about his shooting. The shooting percentages on both of these guys are fantastic. They are both sharp shooters, and they both love to hit dribble moves and then pop up for a shot. That is really what both of their games are all about, and I love both of these point guards. I mean, I've loved Kimba Walker's game for years. He's such a great player and such a great point guard, and I believe Killian Hayes has the potential to be just as good. I mean, of course, you know, Kimba Walker dropped 60 two years ago. It would be very hard to be as good as Kimba Walker, but I believe Killian Hayes has the potential to be a very good point guard in this league and play similar to Kimba Walker. It's really all about their leadership, Killian Hayes averaged over six assists overseas this season, which is fantastic. His speed is a lot similar to Kimball Walker. That sort of just crafty ability to hit quick dribble moves in transition to blow by defenders. His handling, like I just said, I mean, and their ability, the way that they take three point shots, the way that they sometimes go between their legs, hit a little step back and then fire away big tall threes. That is very similar in both of their games. And that's where I really think that this NBA comparison excels. It's just the type of shots that they like taking and the type of passes that they like making. These guys are very similar in my mind, and I love this NBA comparison. I really hope Killian Hayes can become a Kimba Walker level player in the NBA. And he is one of my favorite point guard prospects in this draft. So we'll see what happens next year in the NBA. Next up is Devin Vaxel. This is a guy that I would compare mostly to Torian Prince. Now, I believe that he will be a better player than Torian Prince has been in this league. However, I believe that they are both very similar. The type of shots that they like taking are contested. They get their feet set, and it doesn't matter who's coming up to them. They are still firing that three away. I just believe that Dave, Devin Vassell is a better shooter than Torian Prince is. Obviously, their size is very comparable. Devin Vassell standing at 6'7", Torian Prince standing at 6'6", 
their play style, the way that they like to dribble, the way that they like to shoot their shots, it's all very similar. And of course, they, really what I'm talking about here is their shot selection. The type of shots that they like taking, they really love taking high arcing three-point shots. As you can see in these two pictures that I had on screen, they both like to shoot that ball well above their head. And that is really helpful for getting that ball over defenders. It really reduces your chance of getting your shot blocked in the NBA. They have similar numbers in terms of three-pointers attempted per game and then two-pointers attempted per game. I mean, it's very, it's a very similar play style for both of these guys. However, Vasil, I believe, will be a better NBA player than Torian Prince, like I have already said. Because of his athletic ability, because of his ability to shoot the ball better than Prince can, I really think that Vasil will be a good player in the NBA, depending on what team he goes to. He's obviously a more of a role player type guy. He's not going to be your all-star. So hopefully he goes to a team that already has a couple of players developed, or at least a half-decent point guard. Next up is Tyrese Halebjerton, and I think he is most comparable to Drew Holiday. They're shooting, they're handling, they're passing, and they're rebounding. All very similar. Both of these guys are triple-double threats. Tyrese Halebjerton averaged around 16 points per game, but he also averaged 6.5 assists and 5.9 rebounds, which are fantastic stats. And Drew Holiday's were close to that as well in the NBA, but less points per game, I think more like 11.8 or something in that realm. Now, I really like this NBA comparison. I think they play a very similar type of game. I think they're both point guards who should have a number one option to pass it to, but if that guy is out or if they just need some scoring to come from somewhere else, both of these point guards can get the job done. Both of these guys have great shooting percentages, great passing. I mean, they are both just great players in general. The way that they handle the ball is very confident and very NBA level. The only thing I don't like about Tyrese Hill Burton is just he looks awkward on the court, especially when he shoots the ball. It doesn't look like clean shooting form, but if the ball goes in, the ball goes in. And that's really what you got to look at here. So I really like this NBA comparison. Obviously, Drew Holiday has a much smoother shot than Tyrese Hill Burton does. But as I said, if the ball goes in, the ball goes in, man, it's it's just how it is in the NBA. It doesn't matter what your shooting form is. Obviously, Lonzo Ball has shown us that with improving his three-point shot without changing his weird side-armed body form thing that he's got going on. I like this NBA comparison. I believe that both of these guys play a very similar type of game and a very similar type of role on the team. Next up is Onyeke Okungawu, and I believe that he plays most like Serge Ibaka. Now I really like this NBA comparison because both of these guys throughout their careers have been known for their defense, and that's really what it's all about here. Serge Ibaka and him have very similar size and build. They're both tall and lanky, but they also have a surprising amount of muscle to be packed into such a lanky frame. Both of them are extremely athletic, and they can both dunk the ball with ease on the court. They can both catch lobs. Now, obviously, Serge Ibaka is a bit old now, but in his prime, Serge Ibaka was one of the best players in the NBA, especially on the defensive end of the court. Both of them are insanely efficient players. Now, Onyeke only averaged 16.2 points per game this year, but it was a very efficient 16.2 points. He shot an impressive 61.6% from the field, as well as 25% from three, which are very good stats, especially for a big man. It really shows that while he's not the best three-point shot, he will help you with spacing, and that's really how Serge Ibaka has been his whole NBA career. He's never been a lethal downtown shooter. Now, of course, he does shoot higher than 25%. He shoots around 36% for his career. However, he is a great player, and I believe that Onyeke has the potential to have a similar career to Serge Ibaka. Obviously, Onyeke is a center. Serge Ibaka was a power forward, so they're not going to be extremely parallel. But I do believe this is a very good NBA comparison. And if you're looking for a Serge Ibaka type player, you want Onyeke. He just needs to put on a bit more weight, and then he'll be exactly like Serge Ibaka. Because right now, he's not really able to body up on guys. He's not too big of a paint presence because of his size and his weight really is the problem. But I believe he can put on some weight because he already has sort of a built form. He's not like Mobamba two years ago, where he's just a string bean stick looking guy. I believe the Symbia comparison is very, very close. Next up is Denny Avdija, and I hated to make this comparison because I don't want to just compare all EuroLeague guys to themselves. 
But Dinyav Dija, I do believe, plays a very, very similar game to Luka Doncic. It's just how overseas game is played. Their play style is extremely similar. They both have sort of the same type of dribble moves. Dinyav Dija does like doing a step back. Now, it's not as heavy as Luka Doncic's is. He's not as heavily reliant on it. They both have similar athleticism. They both can score it from mid-range, three-point, and dunk the ball. I mean, they are both very similar type of players. Now, I don't believe that Dinyav Dija will be as good as Luka Doncic. I mean, that's asking a ton from the young kid. But I do believe that their play style is very similar. I mean, you can watch their highlights, especially watching Luka Doncic's EuroLeague highlights is really what you got to do. Because the NBA is so different from the EuroLeague. Watching Luka Doncic play in the EuroLeague, you'll really start to see those similarities to Dinyav Avdija's game. And I just believe that's just the way that EuroLeague, the game is played overseas. That's really just how it is. And that's why I think that these two are such an adept comparison. Dinyav Avdija is my NBA comparison to Luka Doncic because of the play style. And I just think that while I don't like comparing these two EuroLeague guys, I think it is the best comparison that I could make. Next up is Isaac Okuru, and he is being compared to DeAndre Hunter, one of my personal least favorite players in the league because I am a Hawks fan, and I thought it was absolutely moronic to trade up to the fourth pick to draft some defensive guy that sucked even in the tournament. But whatever, Isaac Okuru is, has the same level of defensive prowess in college that DeAndre Hunter had, but he is insanely more athletic than DeAndre Hunter was. And that is really why I think Isaac Okuru is probably a better prospect than DeAndre Hunter was because of that absolutely insane athleticism. I mean, even in, in those pictures that I just showed, Okuru has the ball above the rim. DeAndre Hunter's like two feet short, honestly. So it's really comes down to their defense is why I have them compared. They're both small forwards and they both like playing on ball and off ball defense. They both have a very similar style of reading the play, very good ability to block shots and to cut off passing lanes. Their scoring is very similar in the way that it's not the best part of their game, in the way that it's kind of whatever, it's not the best, it's not the worst, it's, it's just kind of a meh type scoring. It's sort of like Marcus Smart, you have him on the court for your defense, you don't have him on the court for your offense. He can get buckets. But he's not one of your first, second, or third options on the court at any time. Next up is my man Cole Anthony, my favorite prospect coming out of this draft. I don't now I don't say that meaning he's gonna be the best. I mean that saying he is my favorite kid coming out of this draft. I love his game. And honestly, if you don't believe me when I say that his athleticism is like Russell Westbrook's, go look up Cole Anthony Dunks. Go look up Cole Anthony Dunking highlights. They are absolutely phenomenal. This kid can fly at a point guard position. No point guard in this draft has anywhere close to the vertical that Cole Anthony has. It is absolutely phenomenal how high this kid can jump. He will be in the dunk contest if he goes to the right team this season and if he can really show off that vert at the next level. Now, I also believe that he is a triple-double threat. He is a great passer. He's a great ball handler and a great shooter. I believe that he is probably a better shooter than Russell Westbrook is at the moment. And I really love this NBA comparison just because Russell Westbrook is such a star player. He's such a triple double threat each and every night. And I believe Cole Anthony has the potential to be just that. I love Cole Anthony's game so much. I might be a bit biased because I've liked Cole Anthony since he was in high school. But I think this NBA comparison is very similar just due to the slightly streaky scoring at times, but also fantastic passing, fantastic ball handling, and just absolutely insane athleticism. No point guard in the recent years has had the athleticism that Cole Anthony possesses. Next up is another NBA comparison that I really like, and I really think that more people should consider. Precious Achua to Paul Millsap. I think that this is extremely accurate. They both score the ball the same type of way in the way that they are both three level scorers, but they also like to mostly just stick to driving or shooting a three. Precious Achua had an absolutely outstanding college season, even though it was undercut by the issues with James Wiseman getting kicked out of Memphis. Precious Achua really stepped up to be that number one option after Wiseman got kicked out. 
Their athleticism is very similar, except I would say Precious Achua has a much better athletic ability in terms of vertical leap, but in terms of speed, they are very similar, and their build is very similar as well. Now, if you look at prime Paul Millsap, obviously now Paul Millsap with the Nuggets, he's a bit old, much like some other guys that I have had in this list, like Serge Ibaka. He's a bit old now, but if you look at pa prime Paul Millsap, especially Paul Millsap when he was with Atlanta, that is really what Precious Achua reminds me of. And they both have that safe factor, as I had on that graphic. They both have that safe factor, which means that every single night they're going to come out and they're going to give you that same level of performance. Sure, some nights they might show out, but these are guys with extremely low floors, not even talking about their career, but talking about just every, each and every night. They are never going to get in that single digit scoring if you give them the ball enough. They are always guys who are going to get double digit scoring. They're always going to be there on the defensive end. They're always going to get rebounds. They're always going to get deflections. These are guys that really try hard every single night and it pays off. You can really see the result in their game. I love both of these players and I really think that Precious Achua is a fantastic NBA prospect. Whatever team that selects him will make a good selection. Next up is Aaron Naismith, and I would compare him mostly to James Harden. Now this was a very tough comparison to make, and I'm not really sure I like to be with James Harden on this one. However, I do believe that it is a very adept comparison because of Aaron Naismith's insane three-point percentage this season. Now, some people would argue that he only played 14 games this season due to injury, but he also took 8.2 threes a game this season. I mean, if you're hitting 52.2% from three-point range and taking eight threes a game, I don't care how small your sample size is, that is a very good number. He played 14 out of 14 games this season and started all of them. This guy has an insane three-point shot. He really got better at it over the offseason. Last year, he only shot 33%. This year, he came back and took eight threes a game at 52.2%. He takes 14.6 shots a game. I mean, that is just really James Harden level numbers right there, just because of the amount of shooting. And really what it comes down to with these two guys is just their fearless shooting. Their ability to spot up in anyone's face, any point in the game. You know, one of my favorite quotes from Steve Kerr was about Stephen Curry, where he said that Stephen Curry, even if he has gone 0 of 7, he will still take deep threes from 35 feet because he knows he's a good shooter. And that's how I see Aaron Naismith playing. That's how I see James Harden playing. Even if they're having a terrible and off night, they will both still spot up for big three point shots because they both know for a fact that they are good scorers. It's that extreme confidence that I really like in both of these players. Now their shooting ability and their way that they like to get buckets are very similar. Obviously I'm showing you a picture earlier of them both hitting a step back. They both like to get to the free throw line and they both have great free throw percentages. They both have similar dribble moves. And I really just think that their games are very similar to each other. Obviously I'm not saying Aaron Naismith is going to be as good as James Harden. He's not gonna shoot 30 points a game every night in the NBA. But I do think Aaron Naismith is an elite level scorer and he will be a great NBA player for years to come. And last but certainly not least is Daniel Oturu compared to Hassan Whiteside. Now if you look at Whiteside's stats from this season, he averaged 16.3 points per game, 14.2 rebounds, which is absolutely fantastic stats for a big man, as well as shooting 64% from the field and 66.7% from three. Now granted that is on a small sample size of threes, Obviously, Hassan Whiteside is not better at shooting threes than Stephen Curry, but he did have an extremely high three-point percentage that was very good this season. I absolutely love Hassan Whiteside's game. And I absolutely love Daniel Oturu's game. Oturu this season averaged 20 points per game on 11.3 rebounds, as well as averaging 2.5 blocks. And everybody knows that Hassan Whiteside is known for his shot blocking ability. This season, he averaged 3.1 blocks a game. I think that these guys are very similar to each other in the way that they can handle the ball in the paint and their ability to block shots. Now obviously Hassan Whiteside is a better shot blocker than Daniel Oturu. No one will ever be as good of a shot blocker as prime Hassan Whiteside. I mean that dude could just snatch balls out of the air. He didn't even block shots, he just stole shots out of the air. Absolutely insane athletic ability coming from Hassan Whiteside. Daniel Oturu is a less athletic player. 
but he is just as good at scoring in the paint. It's really due to his length and his ability to rebound that ball. He gets tons of offensive rebounds and pushes them right back up. He's great with his feel in the post. He can spin around guys, and that's his favorite thing to do in the paint. He gets there, he gets set up, he gets the ball, and then he hits one quick spin move and just lays it right off the glass. It's such a great move for any center to have in their bag. I love Daniel Oturu's game, and I love Hassan Whiteside's game. Hassan Whiteside is a very good center and a very good scorer at the center position. He is your reliable, trustworthy guy down low, and I, that, that's what I believe Daniel Oturu will be in the NBA. Oturu is one of my favorite prospects and I believe he'll be one of the best prospects coming out of this draft. So that's some of my NBA comparisons. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want me to make a part two. I'll do some of my favorite players in the draft that aren't projected to be lottery picks, like Elijah Hughes and Corey Kispert. I'll let you know who I would compare them most to. Please subscribe and comment down below what you disagree with.